Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together the people of God say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, how are you this morning? I trust you've had your coffee. You've begun your day in fellowship with the Most High. You have your Bible before you, and your soul is thirsty for the Word of God. We're continuing our study in the book of 1st Enoch, and today we are beginning chapter 61. Now, I have placed the link in the description box if you'd like to follow along with us. So if you have that open and your Bibles, let's begin with chapter 61. Now, this is a lengthy passage, and so we'll stop and discuss the relevance of each issue as we come across it. So again, we'll be looking at 1st Enoch chapter 61. Now, I saw in those days how long cords were given to those angels. And they took to themselves wings and flew, and they went towards the north. And I asked the angel, saying unto him, Why have those angels taken these cords and gone off? And he said unto me, They have gone to measure. And the angel who went with me said unto me, These shall bring the measures of the righteous, and the ropes of the righteous to the righteous that they may stay themselves on the name of the Lord of Spirits forever and ever. The elect shall begin to dwell with the elect. Now it appears here that Enoch is distinguishing between the two elect ones. We have the elect ones who are the angels, and then we have the elect ones who are the people of God here on earth. And so it says the elect shall begin to dwell with the elect. We will dwell and live among the angels, and the angels will dwell and live among us. And just as they play a key role in the service of God now, they will play a key role through all eternity among the people of God. And it says, And those are the measures which shall be given to faith, and which shall strengthen righteousness. And these measures shall reveal all the secrets of the depths of the earth and those who have been destroyed by the desert, and those who have been devoured by the beasts, and those who have been devoured by the fish of the sea, that they may return and stay themselves on the day of the elect one. For none shall be destroyed before the Lord of spirits, and none can be destroyed. So we see a resurrection here that's going to take place. And regardless of how men have died throughout history or where they have died, their bodies will come forth to stand before the Most High and be judged according to how they have lived their lives. We see this in Revelation chapter 20, 11 through 13, when it says, I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. Now, when it says, and there was found no place for them, it's speaking of the earth and heaven, not of the people. And he says in verse 12, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead. And death and hell delivered up the dead. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. So Enoch is telling us that all will be resurrected to stand before the Lord regardless of where or how they have died. Even as he says in the beginning of verse 5, the secrets of the depths of the earth cannot hold back, cannot contain them, cannot hide them from the hand of the Lord. And it says in verse 6, all who dwell above in the heaven received a command and power and one voice and one light like unto fire. And that one, being Jesus, with their first words they blessed and extolled and lauded with wisdom. And extolled and lauded with wisdom. And they were wise in utterance and in the spirit of life. And the Lord of spirits placed the elect one on the throne of glory. In Matthew twenty five thirty one it says, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And again, Enoch says in verse 8, And the Lord of spirits placed the elect one on the throne of glory, and he shall judge all the works of the Holy One above in the heaven, 
and in the balance shall their deeds be weighed. In Acts 10.42 we read, And he commanded us to preach unto the people, speaking of Jesus, and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. 2 Corinthians 5.10 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. And in John 5.22 we read, For the Father judges no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. And so we see here that it will be Jesus who will judge both the angels and the men of earth, and in the balance their deeds shall be weighed. And when he shall lift up his countenance to judge their secret ways according to the word of the name of the Lord of Spirits, and their path according to the way of the righteous judgment of the Lord of Spirits, then shall they all with one voice speak and bless, and glorify, and extol, and sanctify the name of the Lord of Spirits. And his name is represented in his character. We see that in Exodus chapter 34, beginning at verse 6, it says, The Lord passed by before Moses and proclaimed his name, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that while by no means clear the guilty. And so there is much emphasis given both in the Bible and in the book of First Enoch to the name of the Lord. And it is his name that we will worship, that we will glorify, that we will extol, that we will sanctify throughout all of eternity, just as the angels themselves do even now. He says in verse 10, he will summon all the host of the heavens. This will be all the angels of heaven. 10,000 times 10,000. He will summon them all and all the holy ones above and the host of God, the cherubic, the seraphim, and the ophanin, and all the angels of power and all the angels of principalities and the elect one, which is Jesus and the other powers on the earth and over the water. Now let's look at verse 10 again because it says he will summon all the host of heavens, all the holy ones above, and the host of God, the cherubic, seraphim, and ophanin. Now we know from previous discussions that there are tiers of hierarchy to the angels. The first being the seraphim, the second being the cherubim, and then in no particular order you have thrones, you have dominions, you have powers, you have principalities. And as I said, we've studied these in the past, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on them. But one thing that I would like to point out is when it talks about the cherubim, this is the second highest order in the grouping of angels. And whether they are existing holy angels or the fallen angels, they still fall within this hierarchy, this tier of authority. And that's important to point out because many of us may think that demons just are all the same, but they're not. They still usurp their authority over one another and answer to one another, depending on where they fall in the tier of hierarchy as God has created them. The cherubim are the ones who guarded the Garden of Eden. The cherubim are the ones who were placed on the Ark of the Covenant. The cherubims are the ones that were placed in the Holy of Holies. And interestingly, Lucifer himself was a cherubim. But over the cherubim are the seraphim. They are the highest ranking group of angels. We see them briefly discussed in Isaiah chapter 6 when Isaiah is receiving his commission. And it says in verse 1, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With two, he covered his face. With two, he covered his feet. And with two, he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And it appears among this group of angels, not one single one disobeyed the Lord. Not one single one rebelled against the Lord. And not one single one fell with the fallen angels. Because we know in the hierarchy of the fallen angels, 
Lucifer is the highest, and he is a cherubim. And so there is none over him in the world of darkness. Now, next mentioned here in the book of First Enoch is the Ophanin. And the word used in our Bible for Ophanin is thrones. And we see that in Colossians chapter 1, verse 16, when it says, For by Jesus were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And so as the Lord summons all the host of heavens, the cherubic, the seraphim, the ophanim, or thrones, all the angels of power, all the angels of principalities, and the elect one, Jesus himself, and the other powers on the earth and over the water, on that day shall raise one voice. And so just as the angels sing now, holy, 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 to the Lord God Almighty, we too shall join in the chorus and the choir of angels as they sing and bless and glorify and exalt in the spirit of faith and in the spirit of wisdom and in the spirit of patience and in the spirit of mercy and in the spirit of judgment and of peace and in the spirit of goodness and shall all say with one voice, blessed is he. And may the name of the Lord of Spirits be blessed forever and ever. This should remind us of Isaiah chapter 11 too, when is mentioned the seven spirits of God. And what we're being told here is that we are going to join together with the angels and we're going to worship the spirit of faith. God is faith, friends. And we're going to worship the spirit of wisdom. God is wisdom. We're going to worship the spirit of patience. God is patience. We're going to worship the spirit of mercy. God is mercy. We're going to worship the spirit of judgment. God is judgment. We're going to worship the spirit of peace. God is peace. And we're going to worship the spirit of goodness. And God is goodness. But instead of Enoch saying that we are going to worship God, he defines who God is. God is faith. God is wisdom. God is patience. God is mercy. God is judgment. God is peace. God is goodness, and we shall all join together with one voice and proclaim, Blessed is he, and may the name of the Lord of Spirits be blessed by all creation forever and ever. He goes on in verse 12, and he says, All who sleep not above in heaven shall bless him. Well, who sleeps not above in the heavens? The angels. And then he says, All the holy ones who are in heaven shall bless him. Could this be the 12 tribes of Israel? Could this be the 12 disciples? Because we know from the Bible, their 24 thrones will be seated around God. And we know it's not us because of the next verse. It says, all the elect who dwell in the garden of life. Well, that's us, friends. As we have discussed, we're not going to live in heaven. We're going to live upon the new earth. And the new earth is going to be one big garden. We know that it'll be one landmass because Revelation chapter 21 says there will be no more sea. There will be nothing to cause division among men. We will be all one living in the garden of life. And every spirit of life who is able to bless and glorify and extol and hollow thy blessed name and all flesh shall beyond measure glorify and bless thy name forever and ever. For great is the mercy of the Lord of spirits, and he is long-suffering. In Romans 2, 4, as we have visited often, but let's look again. It says, do you despise the riches of his goodness, his forbearance, his long-suffering? Do you not know that the goodness of God leads thee to repentance? And that's what Enoch says here in verse 13. For great is the mercy of the Lord of spirits, and he is long-suffering. And all his works and all that he has created, he has revealed to the righteous and elect in the name of the Lord of Spirits. In that day, nothing will be concealed. Nothing will be kept secret. All will be revealed unto us. And that's what Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, when he says, As it is written, eye has not seen. Why? It's been hidden. Ear has not heard. Neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. 
And so oftentimes we think that this passage in, in 1 Corinthians may be referring to things that are tangible, things that he has created for us to enjoy throughout all eternity, but maybe it's referring to the mysteries of God, the secrets of God, the full unrevealed plan of God, so that all the questions we have now that just do not make sense will make perfect sense as he explains them to us on that day. Because again, it says all his works and all he has created, that's two different things. He has revealed to the righteous and elect in the name of the Lord of Spirits. Have you ever asked the question, if God truly knew that Lucifer was going to rebel against him and many of his angels would follow Lucifer into darkness, why did he even create them to begin with? Why did he create man if he knew that we were going to make a mess out of things? We don't have the answer to these things. But on that day, friend, <laughs> hallelujah, on that day we will. And it's not that we take joy in knowing all, but by knowing the complete plan, it will cause us to worship, extol, glorify, and praise his name even more than we are now capable because we do not see his full glory. And we do not see him in the fullness of his glory. Eye has not seen what he has prepared for us. Ear has not heard what he has prepared for us. And you cannot and I cannot even imagine it in our minds of the glorious, wondrous, majestic things that our God has prepared for us. And that should cause us to want to work so much more faithfully in his name here. That should cause us to want to serve him even more dutifully here. And that should cause us to want to seek to know him even more now than we've ever known him before. Hallelujah. Well, friends, we're going to close there today. We'll pick up in chapter 62 the next time that we're together. And so I pray that until we meet again, that the Spirit of God will bring you out of dry places and into the vibrancy and fulfillment of what it means to live in the presence of your God and King each and every moment of your life. Now I love you, friends, as he wills. And until next time, I'll see you on the next video.